I felt like that I was being treated like a baby already, but I pulled the trolley towards me and took up the spoon and I finished off the cereal. Now eat up all of the fruit. Again I wanted to say no, but there was this overwhelming desire to want to obey Miss Monroe. Had she she hypnotized me to do this? No I can assure you that was not the case, all she had done was to help to reawaken in me something that had always been there. Again this was something that along with my memory loss, had become not lost exactly but dormant at the same time those certain memories had left me and had also become dormant. I ate up all the fruit that had been placed out upon the plate. Good girl. I actually felt good too and I was happy that my obedience pleased Miss Monroe and I now desired to please her so very very much. Now drink up too sweetie. Commanded Miss Monroe but in a very loving way and I took up the glass of milk and I drank all of the milk down. Again Miss Monroe praised me. Good girl. I have two very special presents for you. Suddenly not knowing why but, I became very exited like a little girl. Oh goody me weeke presents. I know you do sweetie, that is why I have got for you two of them and they are very special. I waited on the edge of the hospital bed now like an exited school girl, as Miss Monroe pulled the trolley out and reached down for the two parcels on the bottom rack. She placed them now on the top rack and handed over to my outstretched exited hands the biggest of the two parcels. It was pink in colour and it was tied up with a pink ribbon. I opened it with exited eyes and then me face turned pale by the time I lifted off the lid of the parcel. I began to take out each item that was inside and I placed the items in a row upon the bed before me. The items were a pair of teenage girls' hot pink knickers with white lace and little bows that went all the way around the waist of the knickers. Then there was a hot pink matching bra, a lacy white suspender belt, a pair of black silk stockings, a hot pink frilly garter and a pair of six-inch high heel shoes. I looked up at Miss Monroe confused, she smiled at me. These are for you to put on now sweetie, they are part of your punishment as well as you being half of one gender and half of the other gender. Punishment. Oh come now, don't you come all innocent with me. You drew these pictures and not with any of the girls consent to do so. That is an unforgivable act and as it is your obsession to see girls dressed as baby girls, your becoming like one soon is also your punishment and you will forever remain that way too. I began to cry like a baby, Miss Monroe just gently placed her arm around me and gently, but firmly said. Crying is not going to make any of this go away, you have done wrong and you need to make up for all of your wrongdoings, you will become a better person sweetie, I promise you, come on now, put on all of these things before you. Again her voice was a gentle command and I began to put on each of the items that I had placed out onto the bed. It felt strange at first putting on all of these but it was what I deserved, feeling uncomfortable, confused, but it I accepted my fate, but my fate was far from over.